everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show, AKA WLTV, the internet's elite wine program. And today, on the cusp of Thanksgiving Day, I've decided to put a random show together. You know, go figure, Mott, I've got nothing. I'm just going randomness because there's a lot of interesting wines out there and I wanna try them. So we're not gonna go theme today. And we've got tomorrow's show and then Thursday, don't forget, lots of you have the Thanksgiving pack, which I have one here on the side. Thank God I kept that on the side or we would've been really in big trouble. And we're gonna do that. There's gonna be a show on Thanksgiving. Please join us. Hundreds of you have the Thanksgiving pack. Hopefully you'll round up all your friends and family and we can, uh, you know, bring them all together and show them the Thunder Show, so hopefully I'll put together a good show for you. So, we've got four wines today. Uh, I'm really excited about them. I think there's a really interesting, eclectic mix today. We've got a cheese in the hizzy called Sky Queen. Matt, they called you Sky Queen in uh, high school, didn't they? <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's what we're gonna do. So, great show. Let me go into a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, we have another question today from the Ask Gary app. Anytime you wanna ask me a question, I will no longer be answering them via email or any other place. It's the Ask Gary app. It's gonna help me organize all my chaos. That's number one. Number two, the widget contest. Another link over here. Mott, link it up again. That's how we do it. Because the widget contest is off to a huge start. Anybody in the world will be flown in right here, sitting next to me as my co-host for an episode of Wine Library TV. We're gonna do a live drawing here on WLTV on December 6th, I think, off the top of my head. We're gonna have all the names that I have. Over 200 people have already submitted by putting a widget on their blog. And let me get a couple of things out of the air. A lot of people asking me questions last night. Uh, first and foremost, number one, yes. Uh, you can put the widget on non-wine blogs. Got a lot of that last night, Mod. That is totally fine. We love being in that, you know, different areas. That's cool. Number two, a family member. Really tricky question, but a lot of people who've got, you know, kids that have blogs or different, you know, brothers or uncles. I'm gonna let that go. Yes, you can, but you gotta put the name of the email when you submit it in the widget part of who wins so I can contact that person. So I can kind of go with that. Also, I've gotta be honest, had a lot of fun last night. You were viewers of me, well guess what? I'm now becoming an RSS reader of you. So about four or five blogs caught my attention last night I'm gonna start reading them. So that's kind of fun, a little yin and yang going on. But the widget contest is off to a huge start. Please, if you've got any blog of any sorts, add a widget, your name gets put into the hat, follow the rules on this page, you'll see it, and I will pick out a name live, semi-live, on Wine Library TV, and you could be my co-host. We're gonna fly you out, put you up in New York City. I'll probably, you know, have dinner with you. I mean, we could, it could be a great, great night. So, big opportunity for that. Um, answered those questions. Oh, I had a ridiculous 95 to 100 point type wine last night. That's all I wanna say about that. And let's move on. So, let's start with this, and anytime we're starting with a car, I'm, I'm very excited about this. This wine is a Cahors, which is a very important place in France, producing amazing wines. This is a Chateau Haute uh, Montplissier Prestige Cahors, and this is a 16 US dollar wine, which again, Vinny Testaverde, kiss my foot. 16 bones, um, very small uh, producer, but very high end. Now, it, what you need to know about Kaor is that it is a place where Malbec dominates the day. So if you're a fan of Argentine Malbec or Malbec as a whole, um, it is a place where I think you can really, really find some stellar wines. Um, you know, with all the love and excitement we've been getting the last couple shows with Southwest France, Languedoc, Provence, I thought Kaor needed to make a, an appearance. These wines are a little bit more pricey. Now, there's some interesting laws within Kaor. The wines must be at least 70% Malbec and up to 30% of the other two grapes, which are Tanat and Merlot. Those are the three grapes that are allowed in the Gaul region, and I think that that makes it a very fascinating place. Three very different grapes, Malbec, Merlot, and Tanat. And you know what I think about Tanat, real dark, punch in your face kind of wines. These are meaty, explosive wines. Um, Malbec is known as Cot in, in this region of the world, so if you go there and be like, where's the Malbec, they'll be like, you mean the cut? You know, so it's one of those kind of things. Really amazing place in the world, producing amazing wines. Tremendous food uh, can be had in that area as well. And so if you're looking for it, an outside the box, left field vacation, think about it. It's a really cool place. And look at the obnoxious color. And yes, yes, I did big bring out the big ass glass because, Ma, 
I like bringing my bag everywhere I go. So really dark colors. I'm gonna even like spill a little for you. Maybe I'm gonna do a little bit of this. I'm doing anything I can because this color is gorgeous. Just pretty, pretty. And uh, come on, I don't know if you smelled it, but this bouquet is rolling deep. Let's give it a little bit of a snippy snip. Get my whole head in here. Hey, come on. Yeah. It's big. It's a yeah. big time, big time. You know what's really awesome? Right off the bat, I'm getting some pomegranates. Now imagine opening a pomegranate, picking out all those little seeds, and then throwing them into like an old potato sack. That's really what's coming through. I, I get a potato uh, sack kind of uh, nose on here. Uh, pomegranates are coming through. There are some vegetal components. Almost a coleslaw kind of uh, aspect going on here, which is kind of interesting and different. A very different nose. Very old world. This is not the Malbec you get in Argentina, for sure. Um, very dark and rich on its nose. I do get an unpleasant type of after, I mean, on the finish, almost a, uh, almost like a scratch and sniff skunk. Remember those stickers? Or witch. Do you remember witch? I was always like, what the hell does a witch smell like? It was so weird. They had the witch, Mott. I mean, I was big into collecting stickers back in 82 when the Bengals had the different helmets. I just remember that because I had one of those stickers. It was like rare. I think I sold it for $14. Anyway, no, I didn't. let's get into this wine. Let's give it a tasty taste. Oh, tasty taste. Now, quick little question of the day, just fun on the side. How many people have experienced or drank a whore? If you have not, this is a place where you need to seek out. I'm really into this wine, but let's describe it out so that you don't go down that road and say, what the heck was Gary talking about? This is a very rich, tannic, monstrous wine. First and foremost, a young wine. A wine that I'd much rather see, 2002, wow. Still acting like a baby, baby, baby pants, and that's because Tanat is a grape that is so tight, so impossible to drink young. Really a wine that's made for your great grandkids. That's how they roll. I mean, Tanat's like, I'm not interested in you. You're way too old. I'm looking for generation three, four. Now, that didn't work out for Transformers. Those sucked, generation one. Anyway, this is a wine that is serious, serious dinner wine. I mean, even for me who drinks young, you know, barrel samples, high tannin levels wines. This is a difficult wine to just drink by itself. Now, I'm going to do it because I love you. An absolute monster. Some really interesting um, dark blackberry. I'm getting some real interesting, um, like, I would go with sour cranberry flavors. Very, very dark berries coming through. A black cassis kind of really interesting. Very rich. Uh, luscious comes to mind. Like, you know, like lips. You know, like the difference between thin lips and luscious lips. You know, that that's kind of like with this wine. There's, you know, what are you doing out there? That was kind of gross. Anyway, um, you know, you threw me off. Anyway, um, this is a wine that is very viscous, very complex, uh, has a lot of, I almost want to say materialistic flavors, meaning it, it really kind of tastes like like things, like, like I, don't, I, I, I hate to use this term because everyone's going to be like, it's corked, relax, but it does taste like cardboard in a way. I feel like I'm eating my Starbucks cup along with the dark mocha and maybe the blueberry juice that they put in there and all that weird stuff. A very interesting wine. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Flat out dinner wine, wine that I'd like to see put away for three years. A wine that I'd love to have with blue cheese, that roaring 40s we threw back back in Wine Library TV history. Come on, let's, let's link up that episode. I'm gonna have to find it. I wanna link up the episode we did, The Roaring Forties, because there's a lot of new Vaniacs and they need to see that episode. Uh, link that up, you need to check this out. It was a great cheese, we got a cheese today I'm excited about. Sky Queen. Um, a pleasure wine for me, I'm really enjoying it. This is a bang for buck, again, side areas of France are rolling heavy. This is, they're on a crazy streak. I'm not sure if any 
well, this is not fair. They're coming from all different places, but this is a nice run. For a $16 wine, I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to roll in heavy with 90 points on this wine, and I think it's a wine that people should seek out. I'm very excited about this effort. However, rest assured, three, four, five, six hours of decanting will help this wine, and even better yet, you got a little fridge, you got a little cave, you got a big Jay-Z type wine cellar, then put it in there, stick it away for a couple years, and laugh as inflation takes over and you say to yourself, 16 bones? I can't even buy Yellowtail for 16 bucks. Let's move on. Interesting. Tamarack Cellars, I'm excited about this. You know what I feel about Washington State. Uh, I really do believe Washington State is the state in this country that produces the best wine, I just do. I mean, I love California, please, I have so many friends there, please, enough with the emails, I understand, but it's my opinion. Now, I'm really sick about Walla Walla, I do believe it's the premier area, but Columbia Valley, consistently producing beautiful wines. This is the Tamarack Cab, 14.3% uh, alcohol content, 25 US dollars. Um, and this wine is 90 points from Jay Miller, who's now reviewing Washington State wines for Robert Parker in The Wine Advocate. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a rinsey rinse. Oh, rinsey rinse, drinky drink, snippy taste, snippy, taste, taste. taste, taste. You can really get in there. I like to double up the words, Mon. Emphasize it. Secret stash in there. Pretty cool. Anyway, Tamarack. 25 bones. We had a throwaway. Washington, you know, what will be interesting here is does the $25 Washington State beat out the $78 California Classic would be kind of interesting. So let's see if, if it can do that. That's where the two Cabernets come in. It's kind of fun, a little challenge action. Um, really nice color, not, not too bad. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now, I'm not sure if, like, because Seattle is like the coffee capital of the world, and by the way, I'm about to get 15 emails saying I'm wrong about that, but just when I think of Seattle, I think of, you know, coffee quite a bit, but is that my subconscious kicking in on my nose right now? But this is one of the most coffee, mocha, hot chocolate driven noses I've come across in a long time. It's also got a smoky barbecue ribs component mixed in, so I'm sure you're like me, you eat barbecue ribs with a nice glass of hot chocolate with m marshmallows on top. I almost said mushrooms, that would have been really awesome. Um, that's what this smells like. Not bad, not crazy, but not bad. Let's give it a whirl. I'm actually disappointed with this wine. Um, it actually comes across a little bit too uh, bitter on the finish. The finish is not really fun whatsoever. Uh, it's a little bit um, a, a mix of beetles. I admit it, you've had, a, you've had a beetle one. You've never eaten one? They were so interesting, Japanese Just beetles. Recipe. Remember they had those bags? My friend's like 15 cents and I ate it, 15 cents. Hey, listen, when you're seven, 15 cents is like at least a dollar. Anyway. Um, Comes across like a, a little bit of like beetle-esque, I get celery stick, which I normally like, but there's really bitter, unpleasant tannins on the finish. There, there's a nice mouthfeel. There's some pretty raspberry components on the forefront. I get almost like a creme fraiche component on the mid palate, which I enjoy. Um, it's a little bit scatter buttled all over the place on the finish and loses its focus and really becomes a $15 Napa cab to me on the finish and complete, which is a real pass in my book. 25 Bones, Washington State, good score. I was really expecting a lot from this wine. I've had other people tell me it's a good, you know, I love the producer. They make a great little blend for like $10, $15. Um, but I'm quite disappointed with this effort. I'm gonna score this wine 86 plus points. I'm gonna give it a major pass. I don't, I don't feel like it's something that you need to go and seek out, um, but please do. This way you can compare your palates to, to me, um, which is always fun because we have our own styles and never listen to a word I'm saying if the first time you're ever watching. I don't want you to buy one wine that I recommend. Listen to what I have to say, try your own, build your own personal library. You like that. Um, that's it, 86 points. Chris Baker's number, by the way, who called the Jet fans pathetic because the Steelers basically took over the Meadowlands. Chris, we're one and eight. I mean, it's 4.30 on a Sunday and it's freezing. It's tough to talk when you're one and eight. I mean, it's brutal. Anyway, I love Chris Baker, the touchdown maker anyway. Let's move on. Really disappointing. We've been on a really nice roll lately on the Thunder Show too. That kind of took a lot of steam out of my uh, 
sales. Disappointed. Excited to try this. Behringer, 2004, Private Reserve Cabernet, 14.4% alcohol content, 78 US dollars. You know, usually we're in quarterback and running back numbers, but this is like offensive lineman numbers over here. 92 to 94 points, Robert Parker. Um, you know, one of the great pedigree reserve type collectible Cabernets out there. Uh, been dying to try this and see what, what's going on here. Um, let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. So there's a little hint of the, but I kind of like this because on the nose, there's a little hint of the Oak Monster. He's carrying a good old fashioned, let's say pink bucket full of vanilla. So I get that, I'm okay with that. But there's some really nice black currant cherry all the way here on the nose. There's some underlining, um, I wanna call it like schoolyard sandbox kind of flavors on the, on the underlining to tail tip of the nose, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. But yes, the vanilla and the oak are clearly obvious uh, on this wine, which is, you know, a little hairy for me. Let's give it a whirl. I like it. I like it. I'm impressed. This is a wine that exhibits vanilla, oak. It is a fruit bomb. However, it is contained by very impressive second tier tannin structure, which I'm very impressed with. A gorgeous blackberry currant jam-esque flavor on the mid palate and beautiful rivers. Come with me now. Put, get in the boat with me. Rivers of red fruit, cranberries, raspberries, strawberries, cherries. It is red fruit river. And anytime I can take a trip down the red fruit river and the oak monster's not sitting and you know, kind of cramping my style, then I am down with that wine. This is an exceptional effort by Behringer actually. I think Parker is really in the wheelhouse. I'm gonna split him right down the middle and go 93 points on this wine. This is a wine that will last for 10 to 15 years with this back end tannins and a wine that I would really enjoy to eat with a lots of different foods, believe it or not. And this is where wine gets weird with me in food. I actually would like to have this with lobster and that sounds like brr, but Without butter, like a sweet, delicious Maine lobster, and this wine, because of the way the red fruit is going on, is something I can really see myself enjoying. I'm actually gonna jump to the cheese right now because of the freshness of the fruit. We're actually ending with a dessert wine, which I thought I was gonna do, but I'm gonna do this. Mom, I don't even know what the cheese guys are getting crazy. They brought me the Sky Queen, the Jadost cheese, which is from Norway, and, uh, I don't even know how much it is or anything. Ma, just link up, uh, get the price from Justin and just link his email up there if people want information. I think we can even ship it. And um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it comes in this, it looks like something from Norway, right? It's like, hey, you can buy this like at the pharmacy in Norway. Anyway, let's give this a whirl. This is really wild stuff. You know, it looks like a big brick of poop, kind of like, you know. Caramel. But it does look like caramel, doesn't it? Is it caramel or caramel? I don't know. Anyway, it smells like caramel as well. Now this is goat's milk cheese, but it also has whey and milk and cream. And this is really coming off as a dessert. Oh wow, this is good. Come on. This is good. Weird, right? Yeah, it is weird. It's sweet. Oh, it's sweet. This is very wild stuff. The Sky Queen will take you up in the sky and plow enormous amounts of butterscotch and caramel into your mouth. That's exactly what this tastes like. This is really butterscotch and caramel. I don't know what else to say. If this is cheese, then I need to try the ice cream that tastes like mozzarella. Because, I mean, this is really a dessert. You like it or is it too sweet for you? No, it's good. Oh, it's good. I like it. Let me see what's going on with this. Yeah, not so much. All right. Let's move on. And this is where it gets real wild. I'm really excited about this. Did I tell you about the ridiculous wine I had last night? Okay. You can tell them again. Nah. 
Maculon, 2004 Maduro. This is a dessert wine, 16.5% alcohol content, made from Cabernet and Marzamino, which is a wine grape, excuse me, a grape that you normally find in the south of Trentino. Um, this wine is 36 US dollars. This is a 500 ml? Yeah, this is a 500 milliliter bottle. And this wine scored 96 points from Antonio Galani, who is the Italian wine critic for Robert Parker now, who I have to tell you is a very conservative critic. Now, don't forget what I told you. Dessert wines trick us all. Just like this cheese. I mean, this is a cheese you bring to a non-cheese lover. I mean, this is candy. Right? It's candy. Um, let's see what's going on here. I'm really excited about this. You know, late harvesting these red grapes. You don't see a lot of red dessert wines, but I was looking for something to bring to stun the crowds in Thanksgiving, in Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving. So I'm kind of using this as a little beta test to see what this is all about. Maybe bring this. Let's give it a little bit of a snippy sniff. <laughs> Smell this. Um, is that insane? Um, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's oak. What it, what it really is is it really tastes like Almost like gasoline meets green beans meets grape and blackberry candy fired down with like a fire torch. Like, I mean, like, really interesting blend of this this car auto body viscous kind of thing. The green beans are really obvious, actually. And then it's like licorice kind of candy. It's, it smells hot. I actually feel like if I poured it on me, I would burn a little. So let's see what it does to the palate. Oh, this is really different. Um, we were talking about dessert wines with uh, Cabernet. I like soup for chocolate, and I talked about Banyul. Um, this is gonna go right up that alley. Actually, $36 for dessert wine like this is actually inexpensive. They get to get crazy in that price point, unfortunately, um, especially red dessert wines. This is extremely sweet and extremely delicious. It really tastes like Hungarian plum pie dessert on the mouthfeel. If you've had that real Hungarian plum pie and you get to the middle where the plums are and you eat that, you're going to get that kind of sensation and flavor point on the palate. I need to eat a pickle. All this, I don't know about you guys, but I go from like like real food to dessert and then I have to finish off with like something sour. Um, there's just too much fruit and, and you know, between the Cabernet that had really good fruit to the straight dessert that they call cheese, now to this extremely viscous, monstrous licor, all over my palate kind of dessert wine. I like it. I like it a lot, it's delicious. Let me tell you something, there are a lot of people who are gonna adore, I mean, guys, you wanna impress the ladies? I promise you, I'm telling you, I'm bringing home one for Lizzie because this is a very seductive, 16.5 alcohol, seductive dessert wine. I'm gonna score this dessert wine 93 points because I'm not gonna let you trick me. It's a solid dessert wine. It's from the Veneto region where you get the Amarone, and it kind of reminds me of the Ricotta, the Amarones, you know, just like the sun-dried style. A, a very serious dessert wine that honestly, I'm pretty high on, 93 points. I, you know, again, I hate the points, but whatever. I just see a lot of people liking this a heck of a lot more than I do, so it's something worth seeking out. Question of the day. What's that? That's a chill box. Oh, it's a nice box, right? You like that, right? It's a little, it's my secret, my secret stash is in it, man. Show the front. You like that front? Yeah. It's pretty, right? Jeff DeRose got that for me. Big shout out to Jeff DeRose. Again, if you want your question on the Thunder Show, did I mention it comes with a $1,000 gift certificate to Wine Library, too, when your question, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mention that yesterday. Katrina asks, Katrina Hoko Brogan asks, when having my seaweed salad, and it says dot, 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 the paper got cut off. I'll be right back. Ma, keep them entertained. I'll take the opportunity to try this dessert wine. Oh, Ma! Mmm. 
It's delicious. <laughs> Have a nice holiday, everybody. Oh, that is good. Mm. I told you, uh, I told you more people would like it more than I would. So Katrina's asking, when she had seaweed salad, she found herself wondering what wine would go with the seaweed salad? I'm sure all of you, after watching the Thunder Show, are constantly consuming things, whether they're corks or He-Man figures or sweet cheese, and saying, what wine goes with that? And so she's asking, what wine goes with seaweed salad? What do I recommend? And the funny part is, is that this is very interesting. Talk about segue action. I'm like a professional show now. I'm doing a sake episode tomorrow. I've decided. And that's what goes with seaweed salad. But above that, believe it or not, Verdejo, which is a white wine grape that I found goes tremendous, tremendous with seaweed salad. So that is your answer. Uh, now I've got something for you. Huge shout out to Canada. I have to give Canada some major love. Enormous amounts of Aniacs north of the border, Mott. And as I was going through the blog post, a lot of blogs from Canada, a lot of good peeps up there, a lot of wine lovers, and I just feel horrible about the prices that they have to endure with the state controlled or country controlled or whatever, Provence control. Anyway, big shout out to all my pals up there. I'm definitely making a trip at least one next year to up there, Vancouver, Toronto, somewhere, maybe Toronto Knicks game, Canada, David and I have been talking. Anyway, big ups to them. Question of the day. Wow, it was gonna be in my mind, pick tomorrow's show. But then I just decided to do the sake, so I have to give you a new question a day, which is a very good one. I wanna know your favorite all-time single, not show, single cartoon character. Favorite, not the show, don't say He-Man, say Battle Cat. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine, I'm cheesed, but I don't even wanna call this cheese, world. <laughs>